don't do that, if we just leave this near rivers and lakes forever, it's going to ruin the water, it's going to ruin the land with very high likelihood. So we need to do geologic isolation. Hello, and welcome to Nuclear Waste, The Whole Story, a series designed to explore perspectives of nuclear waste disposal. About half a million metric tons of high-level nuclear waste is temporarily stored at hundreds of sites worldwide. No country has established a permanent home for spent commercial fuel. In the U.S. alone, one in three people live within 50 miles of a storage site. That fact may be surprising, but it's not for lack of technical solutions. Experts worldwide agree that a deep geological repository would be the best final resting place for this hazardous substance. So what's the delay, you ask? The answers are complex and controversial. In this series, we're interviewing experts and stakeholders representing pieces of this complicated puzzle to give you a clearer picture of nuclear waste, the whole story. In this episode, Emmy Award-winning documentary filmmaker and deep isolation advisor David Hoffman talks to Arjun Makajani, president of Science Matters, LLC. Arjun is an electrical and nuclear engineer who speaks candidly about the weaknesses of various nuclear waste disposal methods. At Deep Isolation, we believe that listening is one of the most important elements of a successful nuclear waste disposal program. A core company value is to seek and listen to different perspectives on the matter of nuclear waste, nuclear energy, and disposal solutions. The opinions expressed in this series are those of the participants and do not represent Deep Isolation's position. So Arjun, high-level nuclear fuel waste. What are the facts? What is the situation today? So when you generate energy in a nuclear power reactor, you put uranium fuel in it and then it fissions. That's how you produce energy. And it creates very highly radioactive fission product. The two pieces of the fission are very radioactive, most of them. This stuff is so radioactive that it, Evil Knievel drove his motorcycle at 60 miles an hour over the 12 feet or so of the spent fuel rod bundle. Right after it was taken out of the reactor, he would be dead before he reached the other end. This stuff also contains plutonium. About 1% of the spent fuel is plutonium. And if it's separated from the spent fuel, it can be used to make bombs. And so this material presents very peculiar hazards. It's both extremely radioactive and dangerous to health uh, if people come in close contact with it. And then it also has nuclear bomb usable material in large quantities. We've got 80,000 tons of this stuff. In the USA. Uh, in the USA, and a lot more, a few times more around the world. Where is it, Arjun? Where is it? So we have 60-odd sites where we have nuclear reactors, and the spent fuel is stored at the reactor site. Because it's so hot when it comes out of the reactor, there, there, there are pools, like swimming pools, where the spent fuel must be stored and cooled underwater Spent fuel pools weren't designed to hold um, used fuel worth decades. Uh, they were designed for a small amount of spent fuel, and then um, the spent fuel was supposed to be valuable for its plutonium and uranium content, and that turned out not to be the case. So now what we have is a kind of a very special situation. These spent fuel pools are very densely packed. They put more and more spent fuel in them, 10, 20, 25 years worth. And then when they're really packed full, they take out some of the spent fuel and store it in giant casks that are dry casks. Why is this so difficult for the government? You'd think that it's science that would solve the problem, but apparently that's not the case. The problem with this stuff is, so long as it's stored in those sleeves, you know, it's... It's okay. It's not hurting anybody. The workers, you have to take care, of course, the workers who are maintaining all that. 
But all of these materials are corrodible. They don't last forever. And so the idea was to dispose it off in a deep geologic mine, uh, which, you know, where it might do less damage. Putting it in something below ground, tell me, would be safer. And two, everybody knows about Yucca Mountain. I thought that was the idea. We're going to somehow trailer it or truck it or train it all this stuff out to Yucca Mountain and put it in a big hole. After looking at all the options for what you could do with this stuff that lasts for thousands or tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of years, was to put it in a deep mine. In my opinion, there's no nothing good to do with it. There's no safe solution. So when, some, when you're trying to predict for hundreds of thousands of years, your formulas will fail at a certain point. Your containers will also fail. And as we studied this more, as good geologists got involved, uh, rather than physicists, they realized that these containers will leak. So the problem became, how should we package this stuff? And how should we minimize the damage over the long term? Because we know they're going to leak. And so where should we put it? Should we put it in Yucca Mountain? Should we put it in Hanford? Should we put it in the salt, salt uh, domes in Texas or New Mexico? Did that, what happened? Did that solve the problem? Put it well, on the ground. Not perfect, as you say, but better. Yeah. So the Nuclear Waste Policy Act, I think, is a good example of science and politics that were married reasonably well for a very difficult problem. So far, so good. Mm -hmm. Um, so, but then things started to get screwed up and politics started to enter it in a bad way. Uh, partly nobody wants this stuff in their backyard. So in the West, there were nine sites and they were supposed to be narrowed down to three. And then the three were supposed to be investigated intensively and compared so we could find the best one. Now, as it turned out that many of the sites were in areas, you know, like in the panhandle of Texas, there was a tremendous amount of resistance from the farmers. It's about the largest aquifer in the country. So there was a lot of opposition. So the Is it crazy point, opposition or sane opposition, in your you know, opinion? I think, you know, I wouldn't say crazy opposition. I think there is no, because every site is going to have some problems and we're talking about very long periods of time, people get very concerned. And then you've got to bring this stuff by truck or train, as you were saying. Um, and today we are even more aware that, you know, there can be terrorist attacks on these trucks and trains. You could, you could have a real mess. The problem became is as the pressure on the Department of Energy opposition from politically sensitive places like Texas grew, um, it picked three sites, one in Texas and one in uh, Nevada, the Yucca Mountain site and Hanford. And the Hanford and Yucca Mountain sites had been already scientifically shown to be inappropriate by the National Academies. Mm -hmm. So this became a pretty big problem. Now, somebody like me who supports geologic disposal, although reluctantly, as the least bad thing to do, uh, it became a problem for me because I could not support Hanford and I could not support Yucca Mountain because they were transparently bad sites politically selected. In my opinion, Yucca Mountain is the worst single site that has been investigated in the United States. Mm. And now I'm not a geologist, so I thought, before I say that more publicly, as I'm doing now, I should ask an eminent geologist whom I know quite well, and I said, what do you think? I say this, do you think, if you say that I'm wrong, I'll stop saying it. And he said, well, let me put it this way. If a, if, if a freshman geology student said Yucca Mountain was a good site, I would flunk them. Well, then I'm glad that scientists are looking at alternatives. And I know you're an expert, at least on explaining these burial ideas. So we have three concepts now. We had two before. And now we have three concepts of how you might geologically isolate this waste. One was this 
building a mine and you know putting waste canisters in it yagama no hanford or some other place and the other has been since the 1980s known they're called vertical boreholes you basically drill a hole thousands and thousands of feet a couple of miles and um then you put a canister of waste and then you seal that and you put another canister of waste on top of it and you have a basically a vertical pile of canisters um that the topmost canister would be quite deep and so then you kind of seal the rest of it and you have a vertical geologic disposal mm-hmm. of course one so the dis, the advantage is you don't have to build a mine you have one borehole we know how to make boreholes the disadvantage is you can't put a lot of waste in one borehole so now you need hundreds and hundreds of boreholes each one of which has a little bit of damage around which you have to seal and you have to seal a lot of places and characterize a lot of places so now the number of places that can leak has multiplied but the amount of waste that can leak in each place has gone down so it become a different kind of problem now as you know this company deep isolation had come up with a new idea based on fracking technology without the fracking so fracking technology is first you make a bo- uh, drill a hole vertically and then you have a horizontal deviation of that hole um that could go out a mile uh, or so and they thought well we won't do the fracking we'll just take a bundle of spent fuel put it in a canister and put it in the horizontal part now i think that has certain advantages over vertical borehole yeah why would horizontal be any better than vertical well because i think um the the path of the waste back up is more complicated uh and also the amount of waste per canister is smaller so this waste is hot remember temperature hot in a mine when you put large amount of waste in one drift in a mine it causes the water around it to boil that's that's how hot it is now you boil you condense you boil you corrode everything that's part of the mechanism of leakage one of the mechanisms of leakage if you have a horizontal borehole with one spent fuel bundle per canister the thermal stresses on the rocks are going to be lower so the they may not crack as easily but now you need a very large number of horizontal boreholes it seems like something has to be done everything is not perfect you've made that clear there's expense here we're not stopping building nuclear weapons although god most listeners of this podcast hope we do that's not where we are you have children what do you hope for here so the added waste from nuclear weapons is no longer an issue we're not making pluton more plutonium for nuclear weapons the yeah. united states russia they all have more plutonium from on the weapon side that they know what to then they know what to do with the main problem with plutonium and spent fuel now new problems is waste from from reactors <laughs> right now our spent the spent fuel casks uh, the dry casks are visible from off site they are they are more or less targetable um they're not in buildings they have a very prominent infrared signature you know to make it more targetable well you have people like bill gates and others that i believe in supporting nuclear power as one of the solutions to our current energy crisis right so let's assume that's not going to go away um should america and is anybody in the world going to these newer borehole solutions so you know geologic isolation is the least bad approach by far so uh um, if we don't do that if we just leave this near rivers and lakes forever it's going to ruin the water it's going to ruin the land with very high likelihood so we need to do geologic isolation we have three approaches we have the one that has been most investigated big mines and sealing up the mines this vertical boreholes and this new horizontal boreholes i think 
we should investigate all three. It's quite possible that all three would be needed for different kinds of waste because we have the spent fuel, but we also have plutonium contaminated waste. We have high level waste that's in glass logs. So I think we need a fresh start with the idea that geologic isolation is necessary. And then let's compare these three things, their pluses and minuses. Let's make some investment in the new things. Vertical boreholes, I think the government has invested some money. Oak Ridge National Lab has done some studies as to what it will take. And the horizontal boreholes have had very little investment. And I think we should invest without putting waste in it. We should invest some real money in looking at the geology, looking at the pluses and minuses, drilling some boreholes, um, seeing whether we can get the cylinders in and out, how much damage there is around the boreholes, what kind of sealing methods we would use. There's always seemed to be another priority. There's always a priority that's ahead of this priority. Should we move up the priority or is this sort of something we should take care of when we have the money? No, the money is there. So the government's been collecting the money from nuclear power rate payers since 1982. And it stopped a few years ago when the Yucca Mountain project was canceled. So the government has a lot of money uh, that is should be de dedicated to nuclear spent fuel disposal, but it is not being dedicated to that. More on top of that, because the government promised to start taking the spent fuel away from reactor sites starting January 1998 and defaulted on its promise, the utilities have sued the government and now we, the taxpayers, you and me and you know millions of others, are paying fines to the nuclear power plant owners because the government defaulted on that promise. And those fines are non-trivial. So we need to stop paying those fines, start doing, start actually moving forward. <laughs> we need to get off the Yucca Mountain. It's a bad site. Let's get a fresh start. Let's look at these three approaches that we have had. Um, and with some dispatch and some real resources going forward. I want to thank you for doing this with me. Your opinion is very well appreciated by me, and I hope by the audience that's listening. So thank you, Arjun. I hope so, David. Thank you very much for being on, for having me on your show. Thank you for listening. We hope you'll share this podcast with others. And feel free to send any comments or suggestions to podcast at deepisolation.com. You can visit deepisolation.com to learn more. At Deep Isolation, we believe that listening is one of the most important elements of a successful nuclear waste disposal program. A core company value is to seek and listen to different perspectives on the matter of nuclear waste, nuclear energy, and disposal solutions. The opinions expressed in this series are those of the participants and do not represent Deep Isolation's position.